Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today I'm joined by Andrew and Victor. And we're going to talk about the ethics of sponsorships. I'll be honest up front. Some of you are not going to find this episode terribly interesting because you already trust us. But for the rest of you, this is something that we feel very strongly we need to do and put out there. And so that's what we're going to do. But before we get there, what is Whistlekick? We are a company founded in traditional martial arts values, serving the traditional martial arts community of the world. We believe that by connecting, educating, entertaining all of you, it will bring you in and keep you in training and all along the way to our very lofty goal of having everyone in the world train for at least six months. Because martial artists are better people, or a better way to say it, Martial arts makes us better versions of ourselves. That, that's the way I'm starting to say it. I think it's a little, little bit nicer. If you want to see all the things that we're doing to that end, go to whistlekick.com. Check out all of our projects and products. And if you make a purchase in the store, use the code PODCAST15, save 15%. Now, the show, Martial Arts Radio, gets its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Head on over to check out all the episodes. If you're listening to this and you're like, you know, Jeremy, I, I, I trust you guys. I don't need to listen to everything you're saying about sponsorships. Go back and find another episode. Have you been listening since episode one? They're all there. They're all there for you. So you can go check them out. And uh, don't be afraid to listen to an episode again. Right, Andrew, you do that, don't you? You listen to some episodes more than once. Uh, occasionally, there's some interviews that I listen yeah. to multiple times. Yeah. Some of them have a lot going on. So don't be afraid to watch or listen again. Now, if you want to help us out, yeah, you could buy something. You could also join our Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Slash whistle kick starts at two bucks a month as well as any multitude of other things, check out the family page, whistlekick.com slash families, where we give you the whole shebang, all the stuff you can do to help us in our mission. So, uh, Victor, welcome back. This is your second time being on the show. Glad to be here. Yeah. And it's, you know, the reason I have to think about that is because you and I have had so many phone calls and, and Zoom calls and everything that, yeah. Um, it, it, there's a very small subset of people who have been on the show and I talk to constantly. Andrew, of course, is mm-hmm. one of them. Andrew and I talk every day, almost just about every day about something or other with all the things that we got going on. Uh, but you, Victor, um, hold a very specific role on this team and it relates to this topic. And so we said, let's let's bring you on and let's talk about it. So um, why don't you set the stage? What is it you're doing that meant we had to bring you back? Yeah, so it's actually uh, funny. I was thinking about that today, in fact, just in regards to, I mean, it's been probably over a year ago at this point that I first approached you um, to to kind of join the team on, a, on that whim thing about the, the brand ambassadorship mm-hmm. stuff. And then after working with you, maybe for a couple of months, you, you approached me with this other thing and you're like, Hey, I think you'd be great for this. I didn't believe you. Um, but I said yes anyway, cause I've gotten to the habit of saying yes to things and then figuring yes out and. how to do them. Yes. And yeah. Yes. And so you told me that you were looking for brands to sponsor the podcast. Uh, I had noticed I'm a huge podcast listener, like not just to whistle kick, but everything. And you have do, your own podcast. Right. Right. And I do a lot of menial tasks for uh, my tent building work, which is what I generally refer to as how I pay my bills. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I'm always have headphones in. I'm always listening to something. And Whistlekick was one of the only podcasts that didn't have any sponsored ads in the beginning or in the middle or at the end. And some of the podcasts that I love have uncomfortable sponsored ads in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. And so when you- I, approach- I want the audience to know this is all relevant, that I'm laughing, yeah, yeah. but this is actually all relevant. Yeah. Um. So you approached me and you said that you wanted to do- start to seek out ad sponsorships. Um, The conversation started specifically with the podcast itself, but we discussed many a times at many different and all the different um, sponsorship and ad possibilities for um, Whistlekick and to partner with different brands and stuff like that. Because we do a lot of different stuff and it's all sponsorable. 
you told me you, you think you thought I'd be good at this. And my thought, which I didn't express to you at the time, was, oh, well, my sister, you know, did a little advertising and marketing in college, you know, which she doesn't do now for work. So how hard could it be? So I said, yes. Um, which is, is your sister going to listen to this? Possibly. Yeah. But she, she, I mean, listen, she, her and her husband uh, run two river guide companies. So they love what they do. Um, <laughs> she's glad that she doesn't work in advertising and marketing. Uh, she does it for her companies, but it's a section of a greater whole. And so I agreed and I immediately started looking at things and I discovered that there are a lot of people looking for sponsors, ships to basically put their ads on podcasts. And the vast majority of those brands I would not want to work with. And I know Whistlekick would not want to work with. And so it presented a interesting problem uh-huh. in water water everywhere but not a drop to drink type of Ooh, I like that uh, uh Victor just for for the for the listeners for the audience that may not be able to connect the dots the very intentionally vague dots that you've just laid out to the reality uh what what sort of sponsorships were you bumping into that were readily available that did not line up with what we do Oh, am I allowed to get specific? Um, uh, you don't need to name brands, but you can. Name I won't name brands, ones. but we'll say um, certain adult toy stores. A lot of those. Um, certain um, narcotic and um, hallucinogen type of companies, which are legal in the state of New Jersey. Uh, and many of the other states that I've lived in. Not currently the one that I live in now, so... And other podcasts, a lot of other podcasts. Um, there was one for a, re- I don't even think I told you about this one. There was one that was like, hey, we're producing a specific to a religion doll that we want to advertise for. Like, like one of those talking, like talking baby dolls. But instead of being a baby doll, it was a specific religious figure and it would quote, uh, the religious texts of that s- section. I have I have seen so many weird wow. things. <laughs> you went you went down a whole like like weird rabbit hole. Like this almost sounds like it needs to be a subreddit. Uh, it was I I almost the most bizarre product them. sponsorships. I almost contacted them just because I wanted to have the conversation. Just because I wanted to see like, can I get a sample of the doll? Can I can I see it? I guarantee it that it was probably not the proper ethnicity to who this person historically really was, but it was, it was a very interesting rabbit hole. That was the weirdest one, but I love it. Uh, And go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I also like Victor, I listen to a lot of podcasts and uh, I totally can relate where Victor is coming from. Some of the others I've heard would be like debt consolidation companies where like you've got basically like a loan shark company, you know, consolidate all of your debt with us and then you can just pay us money. And and, and then there are the, you know, lots of ads for perfectly fine companies. And, and I have no problem mentioning specifics like Casper Mattress. That was or, the first one I was thinking of. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. um, uh, the, you, the uh, post office. Stamps.com. Stamps.com, right? Like, there's nothing, in my personal opinion, wrong with those companies. This episode is not sponsored by Stamps.com. Yeah, but that type of sponsorship for for Whistlekick, like, it doesn't Doesn't really match. It doesn't fit. Like, nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't fit us. Or Audible. Yeah, I was going to say, we we could be the umpteenth podcast sponsored by Audible. We could, and... um, and it's not even really a sponsorship. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get people to sign up and actually buy stuff, or you get any kickback. Because I looked into it a long time ago, you know, back when I thought, oh, maybe, maybe there are actually people who haven't signed up for Audible because you know we have put out audiobooks. We have two of them, and it just it it like Andrew's saying, you know, it just it something was off. It just didn't it, it didn't relate. resonate, right? You know, we we've worked really hard to make sure that everything we do has value and i couldn't imagine us slinging beds and 
narcotics and eyeglasses and whatever else and having the audience go skip 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 you know we work hard we don't pre-record the intros and the outros because we're trying to make them fun and different enough and organic enough that everyone will listen right Mm -hmm. and and so to have ads that didn't even line up just wasn't wasn't going to fly and so that was something that victor you and i talked about quite a bit was where where we might go there was the obvious you know martial arts companies right and then there were some things that were a little less obvious that we also talked about so how, how did how did that hunt go so the hunt was interesting because like like you said you gave me a list of just well you gave them to me and and, and i had some and we we came up with a, a list of it's interesting. I like this. I like starting with here's where we're not going to go. Mm. Because when you start with that list, which generally tends to be a smaller list, then everything is a go, mm. right? So we kind of started with obviously the narcotics things and, and or or just the things that don't fit the whistle kick brand. This is kind of a no-brainer. And then we started with okay, within the martial arts world, here are places we're not going to go. And that list was not just, um, we don't want to work with these companies. It was some things like, this is too style specific for us because we are style agnostic and a company that say, say just sells boxing gloves and only boxing gloves exclusively. Yeah. I mean, does it work? Yes, but it's a little bit too specific. And this and is where, gotta, where I want to jump in because there, there's something, there's a part that I want to make sure that we we touch on because remember the, the purpose of this episode is to disclose our ethics. Mm-hmm. And so as you're talking about this, you know, where are we not going to go? You and I had a conversation. We as Whistlekick ha- do supply some physical martial arts products. We have supplied everything from belts and uniforms to, you know, we currently supply protective equipment. We've done various styles of protective equipment. We've done face shields. We've done a lot of different things like that. So it, I, I could imagine some of the audience saying, oh, so they're not going to take ads from insert companies that you know of here. And I'm, I'm not going to name names because I, I don't, you know, it doesn't feel appropriate, but everybody knows the companies that I'm talking about. And there are actually quite a few of them. And our conversation was, It's not no, it's that we're not going to approach them. We would not reject having a conversation with insert one of these company names here, but for us to approach them didn't feel right for us. Mm -hmm. But if they approached us now or into the future, we would have a conversation with them Mm -hmm. because it's all about value. And if there's a way that we can deliver value for them and for us and for our audience, of course we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Please continue. No, I like I like the the distinction of approaching. And so that's kind of where my search progressed to. It was okay, so every martial artist, whether you train or you teach, you're in it and the unfortunate fact of life is that we don't spend every day in the dojo. <laughs> is that as we were talking about before, is I can't roll out of bed, throw my gi pants on and have that be my everyday attire because my gi pants don't have pockets and sometimes I need to carry my wallet on me, right? So then we started making a list and then I started adding to that list of, well, what would be useful to a martial artist? That's not necessarily thought of as a martial arts thing. And I started, you know, approaching various different companies. And this is where the challenge then shifted in the fact of now I'm going to companies that aren't looking actively for sponsorships a lot of them in their mind were already doing fairly well Mm -hmm. you know so that they're not thinking about i need to advertise on a podcast specifically geared towards traditional martial arts so now i just have to get people in a conversation with me which in the day and age that we live in a lot of people don't really want to have a conversation with so i threw a lot of stuff at the wall to see what would stick. I got a lot of form letters back, which I always reply to. Um, I got a few, mm, we're not looking at anything right now, but we'll keep you in mind, which, you know, at least they took the time to 
draft an email to me. And then I ended up in a conversation with finally one person in particular and got him on the phone, which we, we've we always talked about this in the fact is to get on get them on the phone. And once I got in that conversation, it was great because it's a great company. I have a friend of mine who uses their products. Can't say enough good things about them. I've been discovering more and more people who uses their stuff. Can't say enough good things about them. His main concern, aside from the no one's ever advertised on Whistlekick before, so there's no metric for the value, right? Fiscally wise, I would say. Um, His main concern was the ethics of it because he also says that their company values that organic reach. If you go on their website, which I'm purposely not naming. uh, Because we we will... you will all know soon enough, but it was important that we do this before right. we start right. that stuff. Please continue. You'll see, you'll see, um, you'll see advertisement or not advertisements. You'll see uh, reviews for their products and not all the reviews that they post on their website are five-star reviews. And I appreciated that. I appreciate that transparency because when they don't do things well into excellence, they let you know. They don't, they don't, uh, cherry pick. Like sometimes you go on some of the restaurant reviews or Google reviews and you, you see like, wow, all of these top review, most recent reviews are really negative, but they still have five stars because you scroll down and you see all the bot reviews of, you know, great experience. We did well, always go here, you know, and you know, it was just written by AI. But that was when I started having a conversation with him about the ethics of it. And one of the things that I said to him was, right, but remember, I came to you. And I don't want you to buy an advertisement on our podcast. We could do that. I even said we could do that. I was like, you could give us money. We could talk about your product. And then we could never talk again. That kind of seems dumb to me. I was like, what if it's a a partnership? Because I see between your brand and our reach and our brand that we could mutually benefit each other. You could, I was like, your audience would greatly benefit from us because everyone could greatly benefit from martial arts. Like you said at the top, but our audience most certainly would greatly benefit from you. And it was interesting and in a good way to kind of have the conversation with him. And then he went back to his TPBs, his powers that be, as I call them, uh, to present the things that I presented to him. And immediately he got back to me, came back to me with excitement. And now we're in talks about how do we move forward, right? With all of this. That that makes sense because we want to have any relationship we have and and i very much see this type of any sort of sponsorship we have on the show as a relationship it is not a uh a, a one and done you give us money for this trans it, it shouldn't be a transactional thing right we hopefully want it not to be, yeah you know we, we yeah. want it to be an ongoing relationship but the question that i think hasn't quite been a- answered is why why do we need because and, and this is me stepping outside. Yeah. Jeremy, Whistlekick has almost 800 episodes. Why do you need a sponsorship, right? You must be, Whistlekick must be rolling. This podcast must be making so much money. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, because um, S- South Park did a wonderful episode where they, they talked about internet views, the currency of internet views. And how it actually doesn't translate to dollars. Yep. And it, it doesn't matter what our episodes are, or what they do, the engagement that comes out of it. You know, think about it. What do we sell? How do we monetize so far? You know, we have a Patreon, which, you know, shout out to everybody who supports. It's a actually a much higher percentage for our show than the average show. We have wonderful, wonderful Patreon engagement. And I'm very thankful to everyone who does because we are, you know, it's value exchange, right? You constantly hear me say that hell bent on overwhelming value exchange. 
and we sell stuff. You know, we sell our events and we sell some products and we get a lot of people coming to those. But it's easy to forget that the core Whistlekick team, plus the people who are producing all of these shows, it's like 20 plus people. Now, some of them are volunteering. Some of them are working for very little money. Uh, some of them are named Jeremy and work other jobs, you know, as, as Victor kind of talked about his his tent poles, right? To keep this going, because I still believe in the mission and I believe it'll it'll pay off. But, you know, our total revenue from episode one to episode 800, if we exclude Patreon from it, because that would be a little bit more difficult math to do, but our total donations and people saying, here is money because of the podcast is $10. We had one person once donate money via PayPal, specifically mm -hmm. said, I love the podcast. Here's a one-time donation. Now, the Patreon is, you know, a few hundred dollars a month. Great. Not enough for me to live on. Not enough to pay our bills. Not enough to pay for the show. Right. Right. The show itself, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to quantify because, you know, things are, there's a lot of overlap. Somebody will work on stuff for the show and, and not, but there are, I mean, what's the latest count, Andrew? Seven, eight people who touch every episode of Martial Arts Radio? Yeah, for every yeah. interview episode that comes out, at a, mi at a minimum that I can think of off the top of my head, six people are involved. And I think you're right. I think it might be eight people. There's some people that I don't interact with directly. But yeah, it, it there's a lot of people involved to make this show happen that people don't realize. And in a couple of weeks, we will have our episode 800 coming out. And some of those people will be spotlighted a little bit. And so people will get to learn a little bit more. But as of this recording coming out, there are a lot of people behind the scenes that people don't know about. It takes a lot to make this podcast happen. I was actually just listening to a podcast yesterday as I was moving dog food in the morning and the two hosts talked and like you guys do a podcast. I and my cousin have started a podcast and it's just the two of us like, but these, these two guys were talking about how like people think that, oh, we're just, we're just two dudes who sit in front of microphones and hit record, boom, podcast done and uploaded. Like my cousin and I, we used to record live. We used to record and stream live our first season. And we're like, this is too much. We need a week at least to produce. And once we drop back, it got so much easier for us. And it's still hard. It's still hard. There's a lot of things that goes into this aspect of everything. And then back to my conversation about a partnership with brands is this is a singular aspect of something that is exponentially driving forward mm -hmm. uh, in a space that's always fluctuating. I won't say growing, I'll say fluctuating. I think it fluctuates in the rising direction, but there are some times where martial arts becomes less popular mm -hmm. and then kind of rides back up, but it's always growing. And is It reminded me of a conversation I had with my own instructor about our own style where myself and one of my other dojo brothers, when we talk about our style of Segido, we talk about it as a system. Whereas when everyone else, some of the other black belts who have come up through the years talk about Segido, they talk about the school specifically in Howell, New Jersey. I'm like, you're thinking so small. Like, and that's great, but what works in Howell, New Jersey doesn't necessarily work in Kansas, doesn't necessarily work in Florida and all these other places that I've been trying and have run schools. And so when you think of whistle kick, now going back to making it on point as, well, yeah, this is what we need ad sponsorship for to keep the podcast running right. But I don't think about whistle kick martial arts radio. In my mind, I've started to dis delineate. I refer to martial arts radio when I'm talking about the podcast, or I'll talk about whistle kick when I'm talking about the organization, the brand as a whole, and every opportunity. And when I've had the opportunity to talk to not just this one sponsor, but some of the other things that are a little out of the box that I'm working on too, as well, I don't talk about martial arts radio. I talk about whistle kick. Well, there's this thing going on. There's this thing going on. Let's start here because I don't want, again, I, I can just take your money 
and we can talk about how great your thing is on a radio program and then we could go ways but if this goes really well what if we then we meaning their company and ours partners here partners there yeah. you know this branch of this organization may not have use for a international reach that martial arts radio has but their parent company might so if we do right by you maybe we you know maybe they would be interested and 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 that's more of how I, as we go about ethics things, one, it's not any Tom, Dick, or Harry coming to us, hey, here's money, talk about how great we are. Yeah. I, I've been ref, uh, uh, trying to calm those things from this, the, 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 the one company that I'm really in talks with, this saying like, I found you. I already know your company. I already know your values line up with ours. I don't want to just talk once one and done. I think that we would work well together and together we could accomplish something that's greater as a whole than the sum of our parts. Absolutely. Let's go ahead, Andrew. I was going to say, I think the thing for the audience to keep in mind in, in hearing this conversation is uh, any sponsor that we have at this point moving forward you have to you as the listener should understand that it's going to be curated that we are not just gonna ever let anybody advertise like we, there is you know we and it has to be mutual value and we're going to curate to make sure that that's the case so let's talk about what that what that means you know i, I think we've we've handled the who pretty well but let's talk about the what and Part of the reason doing this episode was so important to me is that probably a dozen times over the course of martial arts radio's history, I have very clearly said, we are not a pay to play podcast. And in case folks in the audience don't know what I mean by that, there are podcasts out there that have tremendous reach and they charge their guests. And Andrew, you you know this. You you reach out to guests, and sometimes they will say, "Well, how much? Yeah, how much do I have I'll, to pay?" I'll come on your show, but how much? How much how, are you going to pay me to do? Or, or or the other way, they think that we are going to charge them. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And and no money has ever changed hands as a result of someone coming on. But what we're doing now is going to start to stretch that. And there was something, in fact, you know, Victor, uh, the first draft of the contract that that you put together included this person, the head, the, the, the he that you're mentioning at this organization coming on for a guest interview. And, and I said, we need to take that out because I, I would have had them on anyway. But they're not paying for that appearance. And maybe it seems like splitting hairs to some folks in the audience, but it is incredibly important to me that, you know, we are going to have him on I'm going to have a conversation with him. And if I'm remembering correctly, that's not going to be one of the sponsored episodes. We're doing that one first right. mm -hmm. because we're doing the best we can to keep things separate. Again, for folks in the audience who don't know how this used to work in media, you used to have editorial, meaning the content and advertising, meaning the revenue. And the two were not supposed to talk to each other. And that does still happen in some bigger uh, um, media outlets, but in a smaller place like ours, it's we can't do that yet, right? Uh, and it also if it doesn't take much research to to dig around and find that yeah, uh, there are plenty of places that allow advertising to dictate content, and we are not going to do that. In fact, that's something else that is. Um, not part of the contract. They, they don't. They don't. We're not telling them who who whose interview episodes or what topic episodes they're sponsoring. Right. They find out when it comes out. Right. And that's a, a you. You go back what you said. You said it's kind of splitting hairs. I think it's an important hair to split because after we talked about the first initial draft of the contract, and I went back and changed changed that and removed that part of it as I was reworking it, I was thinking about it. Not every brand that we come and partner with is going to be appropriate 
mm-hmm. for a guest member of the episode. This just happened to work mm-hmm. out that way. And we don't want to set that as a precedent. Oh, well, how much how much do I have to pay to get a whole sh- a whole episode devoted to me? Right. Nothing, because it's not for sale. That's not that's not part of this. That just is a like you said, he would have if he had separately gone and filled out the information, he would have been on the ep- he would have been on an episode. In, in, He's in a, a great heartbeat. candidate for it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, and and in the coming weeks, people will will understand who we're talking about and and yeah. why this makes so much sense. Um, what Andrew, you're you're probably the best person to to kind of poke at this a little bit and and play moderator. What are the things that people might be concerned about not being involved in this process that Victor and I can speak to? So, I mean, you've already hit on, I think, the biggest one, which is, oh, if you're going to get, uh, you know, the, if you're going to get sponsorship from, you know, this tweezer company, you know, mm-hmm. like they're going to tell you what to do. You have to, you know, you, you're going to maybe say things about these tweezers that are amazing when they're really these tweezers are garbage. Like, don't get these tweezers. They're horrible. Um, but you're going to say good things about them because they paid you to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think you both have already spoken to that, that, you know, you're you're curating and starting a relationship and wouldn't get involved with this tweezer company because these tweezers are garbage. And and that's, you know, one of the things that, that Victor and I have talked about, and you've heard it, Andrew, at, at our team meetings, as we've talked about this the last few months, there's a whole vision for this, for the products that this man's company sells that, you know, it's not just going to be, here's your 10% discount code. We think these people are great. No, we are going pretty deep on this to speak to the manufacturing process yeah. and their ethics and be able to tell a story. I mean, we've got all these episodes, we tell stories. We are a storytelling company. We're going to tell the story of this company's products and any other company in the future, product or service. Yeah, yeah. And when I listen to other sponsored podcasts with ads, uh, they'll talk about, oh, I got my clothes from Stitch Fix and I wear them all the time. And I'm thinking to myself, do you really? Like, do you really wear those clothes all the time? Like, oh, you're sponsored by me undies. Do you really wear that? Like, Prove all it. The time? Show me like, your undies. But I think in in our case, people listening should understand that we are only going to have sponsors on the show that we truly, really do appreciate and value their product. Yes. And if we're not sure, we will vet. Yeah, we'll right. do whatever we've got to do, right? And and you know, Victor, you're the first line on that. You're going to be digging around. And... Yeah, I was going to say that's 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 why I've been talking to this one person. When I finally got him on the phone, gosh, it had it, it had to be. Bef- I'm not sure if it was right after Christmas or right before. It was somewhere at either the end of the last year or the beginning of this year. So it's not like oh, one conversation, let's already do, like we have been in multiple conversations, Mm -hmm. both to ease their concerns and also to ease our concerns. Because it's one thing to have like a great product. Like I say all the time, like whenever I have conversations with people who are like, well, I don't support this company because the owner is a terrible person. I'm like, you don't really want to open that rabbit hole because I, I guarantee you that you use products every day from a company that, the owner's not the best person. However, and I do too, I'm not pointing a finger and saying that that's a bad thing. However, it, it is all but impossible in Western society to yeah. make sure you are only dealing with companies that only employ people of above board ethics. Right. I, I think it's impossible. As, as the person who's kind of the front line uh, of this thing, I... I take charge of the, all of the listeners and all of the people who, like you said, come to, they see the whistle kick logo on anything and they trust it. Mm -hmm. That's a very weighty thing to hold. 
And because of that, maybe I do a little bit too much due diligence, but I'd rather err on that side of things than on the other side of things. And if you want to choose to buy products where there's someone who is maybe not the most ethical person, that's fine. That's a personal choice. Like you said, it's kind of hard not to. However, I'm not going to hold that product up to the vast majority of the listening audience and say, hey, you should support this thing unless I'm confident that they're worth supporting. Right. The next the next thing that I think people listening will be concerned or have a question about is, oh, so every episode now is going to be sponsored by this tweezer company and you're going to just beat me over the head like beginning, end, and then the middle of every episode by these tweezers. That I mean, that's the next thing I think people sure. could be concerned about. So first off, no mid-roll ads ever. We will not interrupt our episodes for an ad. Uh, is it possible that that could change? Seems really unlikely. It's not, I'm not going to draw like a hard black line on that one. But we all hate, we all hate ads in the middle of episodes. Yeah. The only exception I could possibly see would be Q&A episodes. It, it could fit in Q&A. Yeah, and I'm also maybe. thinking, you know, because and, and I'm going to take a small tangent here. You know, we're also not going to pre-record episodes. I'm sorry, uh, ads. ads yeah. mm -hmm. And so that may mean that what if. What if we are doing a topic. For, you know, some Thursday episode and it happens to line up with tweezers, with tweezers, right? We've mentioned the tweezers in the in the beginning, we're going to mention them at the end, but maybe we throw them a bone and we we take a moment. We talk about something related to them in the middle. Could I see that happening? Yes. Is it going to happen every time? No. But it's, uh, you know, part of us putting out this episode is we are declaring what we stand for. And I want to be really clear that if you hear some element of our conversation in the middle of an episode, once in a while, I don't consider that a violation of our ethics. Yeah. And I think, Andrew, to speak to to the question itself that, that you're talking about, again, you listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. It, it, you can tell. You can tell when the ad is pre-recorded. And it very, especially those mid those mid episode ones, it's very jarring. Even if it's the host's voice yep. and they were the last person to talk, then all of a sudden there's a pause. Now they have a different, like a different tone to their voice and all the, the all these things. Like it is very jarring and, and my brain just cuts out or I double, I have iPads. So if I just double tap on the left one, it'll skip ahead 15 seconds and I'll just keep doing that until I get right back to the content, if it's a mid, you know, a mid episode. And the fact that we say, and and we, spe I, I specify this when I'm writing up these agreements, is that they're not pre-recorded. They're host read, not pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. Because that then allows for the authenticity that one, we're looking for. And two, using the rubric of this first conversation, that I think that moving forward, all of those who would want a partner with Whistlekick would also be looking for. Because why do hosts pre-record their ads? Because eventually they can continuously run that same ad. And if they were reading it, they would just be phoning it in by the end. So at least if they use the pre-recording, they sound fresh every single time because it's the same thing every single time. Yeah. Us not pre-recording ads, like you said, Jeremy, you're talking about things and partnerships and other brands that are coming alongside Whistlekick that are working towards maybe not our specific company vision, but towards our vision for a better society as a whole, which is a weird thing to kind of think about when you're talking about brands. But come on, like who doesn't want to all work together with different right. companies to make the world a little bit better than the one that we currently live in? You know, so those are the types of things that we're always excited for. So to have the ads be fresh every single time, maybe there's going to be something new that this brand is doing that. Yeah, they're always a sponsor of the show, but they're running this promotion this month mm -hmm. or they have a new product line that they're really excited about that allows us to keep those things fresh. Maybe they're coming to a free training day 
and there's going to be a table, right? And so you'll have an opportunity to meet the person who we've talked about, who had the vision for this company. Mm. Those are cool opportunities as well. The other, the other thing I want to, I want to throw out, because I think this is important too. We work hard when we do an episode that's essentially a commercial for a new whistle kick offering. And every time we release a new program or a new event, we do an episode on it. But we also work very hard to make sure that there is value beyond the specific offering. That, you know, if we're, if we're talking about a training program on building strength or speed, we're giving you some of the elements in the program. So if you want to take that information and run with it or simply be educated, we're trying to do that. So just as the, the model here is connect, educate, and entertain, the ads that are on most media programs, yeah, they do the connect part. Sometimes they they do the entertain part, but rarely do they do the educate part. And we're gunning for all three every time. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's going to be the funniest thing or the most joyful thing you've ever heard. Doesn't mean you're going to learn a lot. I think but our, we're going to try. Yeah, I think our episode that we did when last year, right around this time, we did an episode because we were promoting All In Weekend, mm -hmm. which was an event that Whistlekick sponsored and ran and taught at that people paid money to attend. But the episode we recorded was not about, hey, you should all come to this event. The episode was one of the benefits of going to any mm -hmm. weekend seminar and learning from other people. Like we didn't make it just us. It was still an educating, and there was an educational component to that episode, even though some could say that was just a, an episode for us to sponsor our own event. You know, it is, it is my goal that always, every time we do the intro and outro, that we put enough value in there for you that you will watch or listen every single time. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not pre-recorded. That's why we mix it up a little bit. That's why Andrew and I have fun. You know, he holds up and scrolls the Patreon sign and in some way, right? Like we're trying to, to, to bring some, some fun into it. And because if we do that part, you know, that's more value and you're more likely to listen and, you're more likely to engage on whatever the thing is. And so we're trying to do that for others as well. And I think it's it's worth noting here that, um, you know, Victor kind of hinted at this, but the end, end goal is not that it's just martial arts radio that we're leveraging to benefit you, the audience, because, you know, it's not just Hey, you should buy this thing and get 2% off, right? Like we're, we're, we're negotiating. Yeah. We're trying to get some good discounts for you. We're trying to lift all, all ships here, but it's also our events. You know, we put out some cool events and if we can bring in more sponsorship for them, we can, we can do some even cooler right. stuff. It's, it's Marshall journal and, and the print edition that we did that we self funded almost uh, two issues. And I'd love to get back to that being a regular thing but kind of don't want to keep losing money on it. Right. And if I can, if I can tag on to that too, because I've mean. said this, I said this before, I'm not sure if I said it on my episode or again, if it was just one of our many conversations that we've had um, just in regards to, uh, uh, to other things is I think every martial artist who spent any amount of time in the arts will agree on one, on, on these two points. One that as a whole, our martial arts increases as we live in community with other martial artists, meaning we challenge each other. We compete. I don't like the word compete because that gives the, I'm not talking about tournaments. I'm talking mm -hmm. about, I go to my dojo with my brothers and who, who go to other schools and they come and visit for a, a special black belt class and they do a different style than me. And we work together. We choose to work together instead of the guys that I normally work with, because I know how they move. I taught most of them, right? So I'll work with him because he's going to hit me with something that I didn't know he could throw because I don't work with him every day. So in that community, we as martial artists, our martial arts increases from that. The second statement is its antithesis, which would be as a whole, 
we martial artists live in islands unto ourselves. We kind of stay in our own little segregated communities. I've talked with multiple people at Whistlekick. You have no idea. I've never even heard of the other martial arts organizations that I belong to. Conversely, I talk to them and they're like, what's Whistlekick? Like, like we live in these different little communities that are in essence, without realizing it, segregating us from something that would eventually, like you said, rising tide lifts all ships. It would bring all of us up. And even though we're doing it through the lens of brand ambassadorship, I have always viewed myself as as an ambassador for martial arts, for my system, for my style. When I was in Florida, it's funny, my instructor talks about his first teacher and how his first dojo didn't really have a system that it taught because it was just Ronin, a gathering of people who had nowhere to go. So all they did was get together and fight. And that's how he developed his system because he would be sparring with this Shotokan guy one week. And then the next week he'd be fighting this guy who moved from China and does traditional Shaolin Kung Fu. Like, how do you adapt to something like that? Right. Yeah. I think I without realizing it inherited my instructor's first instructor spirit, because when I travel and I've moved and lived in a bunch of different places, I've always found myself with people. Oh, I used to do martial arts. Oh, where do you train? I don't, you want to get together and train? What do you mean? I was like, you want to just fight. You want to just spar. You want to just move around. And we do like, I have a list of most of my martial arts friends and associates that I talk to. None of them train. None of them are under people. I'm their connection to possibly getting getting a higher rank because I know people who train their style who are higher ranked than them that and they don't know anyone who's above a first degree black belt in what they do. Mm. Right? I'm like I can't promote you, you don't do what I do, but I know this person. And how do we do that? Well, well we contact other people. I mean, we talked about the podcast's number being hard to quantify its value fiscally. But there's so much deeper. I've worked for a lot of nonprofits and the the nonprofit sector is interesting because you really can't quantify the value of something by what money it brings in. (laughs) You, you can't, I talked to this one person who they were telling me that one of the people in there, they put on a radio station. They ran a whole radio station that was local to New Jersey. And one guy during their meeting was like, well, we should stop doing this because it it costs this much. Yeah, it makes no money. And then systematically, people in that meeting started standing up. Important people in that organization started standing up and it's like, I wouldn't be here because of that. And then this person's like, well, I first walked through these doors because I heard the radio station. And, and it was literally a third. A third of the room stood up and said, no, 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 this may not make us money, but I'm a resource in this organization. I'm a connection in this organization. And that's what I I try to do when I approach these different brands is I see this thing. And again, like you said, people are going to know, have way more of a context for everything, hopefully in a couple of weeks, but even hopefully, hopefully beyond that, right? Hopefully beyond that, there's going to be some, some of the brands that I, I approach, like you wouldn't think as a martial artist, I need this product. But as a human who does martial arts, oh, this product would make this, this would make my life easier. Okay. Oh, I never thought about that. Like tweezers. Oh my gosh. I I my first martial arts injury was a gash down my forearm. Like from tweezers? No, from someone who didn't use tweezers, oh. who threw a beautiful, a beautiful roundhouse kick, and I double arm blocked it and shoved it out of the way. And then I looked down and I was dripping blood. Uh, you were filleted. I was filleted. Yeah, filleted by the so, big toenail. So is now the, the the time where we tell everybody that we're now sponsored by this tweezer company? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> or nail clippers? Nail clippers. I, I yeah. I, I I don't I don't know if there's more that we need to say here. Uh, so let me say this, and then I'll I'll let each of you tack on if there's more that needs to be said. There's eight years of history with this show, there's 10 years of history with this company. Uh, If people can find examples of where we have compromised our integrity, I I wanna see them because I wanna have a better understanding of how your brain works. Because it is the thing that is most important to me. 
it is the thing that when I talk to people, they often lead with, that they appreciate that we have never compromised our integrity and we won't start doing it now. We talked about bringing on ads four years ago, five years ago. It was, a, it was several years ago. Before me. Before Andrew in the Martial Arts Radio Facebook group. And I said, what if, what would, what would be important to all of you? And as you might not, as might, as may not surprise you, my standards were already drawn higher than every single comment made. Because I'm not going to put what we have at risk. We continue to grow. We continue to reach people. People do not have to do much research to figure out what we stand for. And I won't let a few dollars compromise that. I won't let any amount of money compromise that. If somebody comes up with a, a whole bunch of money, I might just hand them the keys. But I'm not going to take money on an ongoing basis mm -hmm. and say, yeah, you know, we have a price for that. Victor, anything else? No, I, I, I think that's that's great. Uh, the only the only thing that I would add in in that is. If you're listening to this and you're like, wow, that's you know, that's really cool. I, I like the the, the compromise thing. I like the, the partnership thing. You know, I I I just wish that my fill in the blank product was something martial artists could use. It could be. You don't know. I'd be willing to have the conversation with anyone and everyone. That's that's I love I love people. One of one of the many jobs that I have had involved me standing on a stage talking to a room of of hundreds of people, and I was good at it, but I hated it. It's not uh, people who watch me who knew me said that I looked like a tiger at the zoo because I would pace the stage back and forth because I hated it. Um, I am very much the. I'm very much the, oh, that's an interesting thought. Why don't I buy you a drink and we can go talk about it one-on-one? -on -one. Hmm. I always, and, and when I talk to anybody, I can say, I always say this, you can ask me any question you want, but you have to be okay with whatever answer I give. And sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is you, you don't have access to that information. I'm not going to give it to you. Hmm. Sometimes the answer is yes. A lot of times the answer is yes. <laughs> and I always like having good conversations with people. And you'd be surprised how many things a martial artist will find use for. We're just so, people. So what do people want to have that conversation? What if they want to have that conversation with me? Um, I mean, there is my email. Um, the My Gmail is vgarino1 at gmail.com. Go ahead and shoot me an email. Uh, I would say title it WK Sponsorships or Whistle Kick sponsorship inquiry something along those lines yep. so that i can you know get through it and you know I, I can find it and then please be patient with me because like i said at the top of this i make i do a lot of a lot of other jobs to pay my bills so that i can do the things that i'm passionate about so i may not get back to you within that same day it is not yet your full-time job but we hope not to make yet. it that at some yeah. point soon and if you're listening in the car or something, uh, you can always just, you know, I, I would imagine my email address is probably more top of mind for many of you. You can get to Victor through me. Just, you know, tell me what you're doing and I'll, I'll pass it on to him. The, the, the guy I'm currently talking with got to me through you, in fact. So, yeah. uh, Andrew, anything we've missed in, or anything to add? What I would add is that, and I, I'm only speaking for myself, but I'm pretty certain that, Jeremy, you would feel the same sentiment. Uh, if I am asked, if we get a sponsorship from this tweezer company, you can guarantee that I trust and believe in these tweezers, that they are really good, that I have seen them myself, I have used them, and I believe that they're something that I would stand behind. There are a lot of of ads from other podcasts I listen to that I do, I've said it before, I genuinely wonder, do you really use this product? You're being paid to talk about it, but do you really use it? 
for myself, I will not speak for a product that I do not. Maybe I don't necessarily use it, but it is a product that I believe in. Yep. That's all. Okay. Well, that was it was longer than I thought it was going to be, but not in a bad way. We unpacked that really well. So audience, thank you. I appreciate you listening or watching this. And I hope that in the future, you will start to see these seeds that we've sort of planted here take root as we read ads or as you see some of these products and you know mentions on social media and just really our efforts to the, the word Victor used that I think is really important is partnership. As we partner with these brands to generate mutual value, you know, a lot of the value coming our way will be financial, but it won't be the entire value. Okay. And if you ever have questions, and this isn't just about this, this is for anything and goes indefinitely. If you have questions, if you have concerns, I do want to hear them. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you want to, I don't know, if you want to follow us on social media at Whistlekick, uh, remember that we do offer consulting for martial arts schools. Is the very same incredibly clear, well thought out, integrity driven actions that guide this company are what we do for martial arts schools. And we are very successful in doing it. So if you want more students, you want to make more money, you want to feel inspired again, you know, whatever it is, if there's something going on, don't be afraid to reach out. Everybody gets a free hour. Not all at once, but everybody gets a free hour. <laughs> all right. That's all for now. Do we want to try for all three? Until next time, Train hard. Train hard. Smile. Smile. And have a great have day. Have a great day. Train hard, smile, have a great day.